Elvis Presley's Graceland foreclosure auction is blocked by a judge. A judge has blocked the auction of Elvis Presley's former home by a company that claimed his estate failed to repay a loan which used the property as collateral. Shelby County Chancellor Joe Day Jenkins issued a temporary injunction against the proposed auction of Graceland that had been scheduled for Thursday. Mr. Jenkins' injunction essentially keeps in place a previous restraining order he had issued after the singer's granddaughter Riley Keough filed a lawsuit to fight what she claimed was a fraudulent scheme. A public notice for a foreclosure sale of the 13-acre estate in Memphis, Tennessee, posted earlier in May said Promenade Trust, which controls the Graceland Museum, owes $3.8 million after failing to repay a loan taken out in 2018. Keo, an actor, inherited the trust and ownership of the home following the death of her mother, Lisa Marie Presley, last year. Nossini Investments and Private Lending said Lisa Marie Presley had used Graceland as collateral for the loan, according to the foreclosure sale notice. Keo alleged that Nossini presented fraudulent documents regarding the loan in September 2023. Neither Keo nor lawyers for Nossini Investments were in court. Lisa Maria Presley never borrowed money from Nossini Investments and never gave a deed of trust to Nossini Investments, Keo's lawyer submitted in the lawsuit. Kimberly Philbrick, the notary is listed on Nassini's documents, indicated that she never met Lisa Marie Presley nor notarized any documents for her, the court filing said. Graceland opened as a museum and tourist attraction in 1982 as a tribute to Elvis, five years after the King of Rock and Roll died and aged 42 in 1977. He purchased Graceland Mansion in 1957 and lived there until his death. It now draws hundreds of thousands of visitors each year, and a large Elvis-themed entertainment complex across the road from the museum is owned by Elvis Presley Enterprises. <coughs> Police investigate source of ketamine which killed Matthew Perry. Police are investigating the source of the ketamine which killed actor Matthew Perry, it has emerged. Perry, who was best known for playing wisecracking Chandler Bing in Friends, died at his LA home last October after being found unresponsive in a swimming pool. A post-mortem found his death was an accident from the acute effects of ketamine. Ketamine is a sedative that can be used as a recreational drug, as well as to treat depression. Los Angeles Police Department says it is working with the Drug Enforcement Agency as part of an investigation into why Perry, 54 years old, had so much ketamine in his system at the time of his death. People close to Perry told investigators that he was undergoing ketamine infusion therapy, an experimental treatment, according to his autopsy. The medical examiner wrote however that Perry's last treatment was one and a half weeks before his death and would not explain the levels of ketamine in his blood. Perry had also drowned in the heated end of his pool, in what the medical examiner described as a secondary factor in his death. They added he had reportedly been clean for 19 months. Perry regularly spoke about his battle with addiction, including a near-death experience in 2019 after his colon burst as a result of opioid use. Speaking to NBC's Today presenter Hoda Kotb on her Making Spaces podcast in March, Perry's stepfather said the star felt like he was beating his battles with addiction. <coughs> Roof ninja of a woman found living inside shop sign said it was an old safe spot. A woman who was living inside a sign on the roof of a Michigan supermarket told police officers who found her it was an old safe spot. The 34-year-old woman, who has not been named, was found by police in the attic-like space inside the family fair sign on April 23. The woman had been living there for over a year and had a coffee maker, computer, bedding, phone and even a printer with her, police said. The sign was estimated to be about 5 feet wide and 8 feet high and has a door that is accessible from the roof. Asked how she found the space, she said it was an old safe spot that was known to her family and secret to most others. She stopped short of explaining why she had been living there for over a year. The woman, who emerged in black clothing with ski goggles perched on her head, had been given the nickname Roof Ninja, one police officer joked. Police were called to the store when contractors working on the roof followed an extension cord to the hideaway. The woman was inside when two officers asked her to open a small door on the back of the sign. 
After the exchange, Brennan Warren of the Midland Police Department said, I honestly don't know how she was getting up there. She didn't indicate either, he said. There was no sign of a ladder, so it's possible the woman made her way to the roof by climbing up elsewhere behind the store or other retail businesses, he explained. The woman told police she had a job elsewhere and asked to call her employer and get a truck to put her belongings in storage, but the officers said no, making clear that store staff would remove the possessions and return them to her. There was some flooring that was laid down. A mini desk. Her clothing. A Keurig coffee maker. A printer and a computer, things you'd have in your home, Officer Warren added. The woman was able to get electricity through a power cord plugged into an outlet on the roof, he said. Police said the woman was cooperative and quickly agreed to leave. No charges were pursued and she was provided with information about local services in the area. She apologized and continued on her way, Mr. Warren said. Where she went from there, I don't know. A spokesperson for Spartan Nash, the parent company of Family Fair, said store employees responded with the utmost compassion and professionalism. Ensuring there is ample safe, affordable housing continues to be a widespread issue nationwide that our community needs to partner in solving. Jennifer Lopez questioned on rumors of Ben Affleck's divorce. Jennifer Lopez has deflected questions that her marriage to Ben Affleck is heading for divorce amid swirling rumors. The 54-year-old actress and singer hit out at a reporter who asked if there was any truth to the rumors during a press conference for her new Netflix film Atlas. Social media footage of the event in Mexico City shows a journalist ask, is your divorce with Ben Affleck real? These rumors? What is the truth? Para la press la mexicana, for the Mexican press, what is the truth of the situation? Lopez's co-star Simu Liu, best known for playing Shang-Chi in Marvel's 2021 film Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings, immediately interjected saying, okay, we're not doing that. Don't come in with that energy, please. Lopez also leaned forward and looked directly at the reporter, responding, you know better than that. The Jenny from the Block singer has been promoting the new sci-fi film for which she is a producer, without Affleck, 51 years old. She is also gearing up to head out on her film tour of This Is Me Now at the end of June, sharing footage of rehearsals on social media. Affleck was also absent from the Met Gala in New York earlier this month, despite Lopez being a co-chair for this year's fashion event. The pair married in July 2022 having been previously engaged before a high-profile split in 2004. Security concerns over Microsoft feature which takes screenshots every few seconds. A new Microsoft feature that screenshots users' laptops every two seconds is being investigated by the Information Commissioner's Office ICO. The recall feature will be installed on new Microsoft laptops and is part of their Artificial Intelligence AI program Copilot Plus. The feature will record everything a user does by taking screenshots every few seconds. It then allows the user to scroll back through their activity and search. However, after security concerns were raised around the feature, the ICO said, we are making inquiries with Microsoft to understand the safeguards in place to protect user privacy. Recall is designed to help you easily find and remember things you've seen using natural language, according to Microsoft, using AI and photographic memory. For example, if a user was shopping online and spotted a nice brown leather bag, days later they could search, brown leather bag, in recall. It would then pull up screenshots of the times they were looking at a brown leather bag and link them to the websites they were on. It would also search through pictures, documents, presentations and files and pull up anything relevant on their laptop. It may even suggest actions the user would want to take in relation to their search. However, one cybersecurity expert described the new feature as a grab and go a target for criminals. With this feature, suddenly endpoints will become a more lucrative target. IT is a one shot attack for criminals, like a grab and go, but with recall, they will essentially have everything in a single location, said Mohammed Yahya Patel, lead security engineer at Checkpoint, a cybersecurity firm. 
Microsoft said the files will all be stored locally on users' laptops and not accessed by Microsoft or anyone who does not have device access, which should reduce the risk of hackers accessing the files on a cloud-based system. However, the files won't be censored in any way when they're stored, meaning personal information like visible passwords or visible medical information will be kept in the screenshots. If the user's laptop is hacked into, there are concerns extremely sensitive data could become easily accessible. Charlie Milton, a vice president at cybersecurity firm SensorNet, said the feature increases the risk of scams by potentially allowing hackers to understand their victims' lifestyles. As a hacker, the first thing I'll do is go and look at all the screenshots of what you've been doing recently to understand your behavior. If I'm going to try and make some money from you, the best way to do that is to pretend to be somebody that you're likely to transfer money to and have been working with in the last 48 hours, and then tell you that my bank account details have changed. It would give those malicious actors a really good understanding of user behavior and recent user behavior in order for them to influence you. That's really significant, he said. Microsoft told a would-be hacker would need to gain physical access to a device, unlock it and sign in before they could access saved screenshots. In a blog post about the new feature, Microsoft also said the user is always in control and can delete individual snapshots, adjust and delete ranges of time and settings, or pause at any point. They can also stop the feature recording specific apps and websites. London-born teenager to become a millennial saint after miracle recognized by the Pope. A London-born teenager is set to become the first millennial to be made a saint after he has had a second miracle attributed to him by Pope Francis. Carlo Acutis, who died of leukemia in 2006, aged 15, was beatified in 2020 after appearing to have cured a Brazilian boy, Matthias Viana, of a serious birth defect which left him unable to keep down his food. That miracle, which dates back to February 2014, saw the boy being fully cured after he touched Carlo's relic and said, stop vomiting, a priest and family friend of Matthias's said. The second miracle saw a girl from Costa Rica who was studying in Italy reportedly being healed after suffering a head trauma. She was reportedly cured by the boy after he was invoked by her mother, Avenire, the daily newspaper of the Italian Bishops' Conference, CEI, reports. Pope Francis took the decision to attribute the second miracle to Carlo during a meeting with the head of the Vatican's saint-making department, Cardinal Marcello Semeraro. Carlo was informally known as God's influencer, as he used his computer skills to spread the Catholic faith. Born in London, Carlo grew up in Milan where he took care of his parish website and later of a Vatican-based academy. The attribution of a second miracle means the boy can now be elevated to sainthood, but the Vatican did not say when this would happen. The Roman Catholic Church teaches that only God performs miracles, but that saints who are believed to be with God in heaven intercede on behalf of people who pray to them. Typically, miracles are the medically inexplicable healing of a person. Due to his important role in evangelization through the internet, Carlo was named as a patron of last year's World Youth Day in Lisbon, organizers of the event said, 